Danielle with Danielle Gets It Done, and today I'm going to be talking about how to deal with a fussy, colicky newborn. Gonna love you, honey, on and on and on. I'm a morning dove singing out a song. Colic in itself is a little controversial of a term. To me, it just means an extremely fussy baby who is hard to calm down. And that is what we are dealing with. Norma, our baby, is about eight weeks and she is fussy. And I'm gonna be sharing with you what has really helped us to kind of deal with that. And this is all based on Dr. Harvey's work. I have read both his book and his DVD called The Happiest Baby on the Block. And they're both really good. The DVD is quick. So if you like are sleep deprived and don't have time, just watch that DVD. I'll link them both below. But I really recommend the book if you have some more time. I actually read the book in preparation for my son's birth. I didn't really need it. He was an easy baby. But it's super interesting. There's a lot of research and social science stuff. So he argues that colic or fussiness doesn't exist in every culture and so he wanted to know why why that is that some babies in certain cultures cry like 15 minutes a day and that's it he thinks it's because in those cultures the babies are held really often they're able to breastfeed on demand families and friends are more like helpful in those cultures like everyone kind of lives in a community and if the mom can't hold the baby at one point, you know, a friend or a family member will help with the baby. And so he had he has developed what are called the five S's for soothing babies. Before I get to that, he calls the three months after the baby is born as the fourth trimester. He almost considers babies of this age as still fetuses. Humans are really immature and underdeveloped when they're born. They have to be born when they are born because their brains are so big and their heads are so big and they need to be able to safely exit their mother's body. But they aren't mature like other animals. For instance, most mammals can walk right when they're born and then they can kind of defend themselves more easily. And we are pretty helpless when we're born in some ways. And so he treats those three months as the fourth trimester and we kind of want to mimic what the baby felt in the womb during this time because that will be really soothing to them. So the five S's. The first S is swaddling. And I have some products that kind of correspond with these S's and I will link everything below so you can either swaddle with a blanket let me know if you want a video on how to do that but i really like aiden and anias muslin blankets for swaddling my husband is like a plus swaddler so it's usually his job but then there are tons and tons of swaddles that you can buy online that just zip up or velcro up and it kind of just is foolproof and makes it easy so again it kind of mimics the womb they're obviously not swaddled in the room in the womb but they're in a closed close area and they are surrounded by fluid and that just kind of puts pressure on them so they like to be compact and he says swaddling alone probably won't make the baby stop crying but it's an essential first step in his program and they might even cry at first even harder and make you think that they don't like to be swaddled he encourages you to like keep trying and keep going through the s's and he thinks it's just like a good first place to start so s is for swaddle the second s is for side lane i actually forgot all about this s until i rewatched the dvd for this video and Oh, the side lane has really helped Norma since we implemented it. So while she's swaddled, you lay the baby on their side or on their stomach, and something about this kind of triggers a calmness in them. He calls these things almost like a reflux, like it will just calm the baby. I'm not really sure how this corresponds to mimicking the womb, 
the side lane, but it something happens. I don't know. It's magic. You should try it. The third S is swinging or jiggling. Babies like to move, and this does make sense easily because when the baby is in our stomach, we are moving <laughs> throughout the day. They're just used to that constant or semi-constant rocking. And so they love swings. Um, unfortunately, the rock and play was just recalled, but I will link the swing we have below. And even like you, obviously, moms are always bouncing their babies. Another thing with moving is baby wearing can be so helpful. It is for me. I baby wear her a lot and on days where I baby wear her like more than usual are really easy days. So my personal preference is the Ergo. I just love my Ergo. Um, but there are a ton of wraps. There are Mobies and Tulas I think is a popular one. And just find one that is easy for you and works for you. I promise you will be so happy. Your baby will be happy and you will be able to have both hands to get things done. And when the baby is swaddled and on its side, you can kind of jiggle its head. It's, you're obviously not shaking the baby because we all know what can happen with that, but just kind of light jiggles really helps to calm them. And Google or YouTube videos of people doing this and this doctor doing this and you will just be shocked. A baby goes from crying like crazy to quiet and peaceful. It's really fun to watch. The fourth S is shushing. Before I was a mom, I thought we said shh to babies because we wanted them to shh be quiet. <laughs> But that is not true. What it is is mimicking the sound in the womb. The womb is a loud place. He says it's as loud as like a loud vacuum cleaner. And so they like that white noise shushing sound. It kind of sounds like shh, so that is why we do that. Moms are so smart. And so you can either just shush them to their ear and he says you can get loud, like match the level of their cries with your shushing. Like, don't be afraid to be loud. So you can do that. You can buy white noise machines. I mean, there are a ton. I have a new shusher that I just got recommended by my sister-in-law that is easy to travel with. And yeah, you need a shusher. You need white noise. And the fifth S is sucking. So babies just need to suck for comfort. So that can be obviously breastfeeding they'll be sucking to get their milk or bottle feeding and in between um i personally love pacifiers i don't know what i would do if my kids didn't take a pacifier so luckily she does and that really helps her to stay calm i will leave the ones we like below but it's kind of like bottles you gotta kind of find what your particular baby likes he did have a good tip on the dvd because i know a lot of kids don't take pacifiers and he says common sense, if they don't take them, you kind of like keep pushing them in their mouth, but you want to do the opposite. You want to put it in their mouth and kind of try to flick it out so that they have to suck hard to bring it back in. And that kind of helps them, I don't know if it's like building the muscle to take the pacifier, but I had never heard that tip before. So try that out maybe if your child doesn't take a pacifier. Let me know if you had trouble getting your kids to take one. I feel so bad for parents whose kids don't take one because it's personally our saving grace. Dr. Harvey is also the maker of the snoo, <laughs> which is the crazy expensive bassinet that I did buy for Norma. I do not regret a single cent of how much it costs. Like it is, amazing. She sleeps so well at night, even though she's a fussy baby, she is not at night and I know it's because of the snoo. So it both gives her the swinging, jiggling motion and the white noise and she just sleeps really well. So I'm going to do a whole video dedicated to that. So look out for that. That is everything. Let me know if you have any tips on how to calm a fussy baby. We can all share below. I hope you have a wonderful day and whatever your plans are, I hope you get them done. Bye guys. Ooh.